Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to my cold damp garage. As you know we're going to sort out the garage door for the garage if you want to see the video with regards to the garage door and I believe it's called a doorway to my Ferrari, check the links below. And we've got the dehumidifier function in here below as you can probably hear the hum from the dehumidifier in the background. Um, that's helping to reduce the RH level and again if you want to learn more about the dehumidifier and the review of the dehumidifier please see the links below. So today's video is the quirks slash features of the 458 steering wheel. Now the 458 steering wheel was used in various other Ferrari models. Models including the 458 derivatives, the 488 derivatives, the California T, the FF, the F12 and the F12 TDF. I might have missed some others out. If I have, please correct me in the comments below, but I think that's just about picked those up. So without further ado, let's go on into the video. So we're sat in my 458 Spider. This is the steering wheel for the 458 Spider. The first part of the design of the steering wheel and the first bit of functionality to talk about is the rev lights. Now I'm not going to start the car because it's in storage at the moment, but this bar here, this LED bar, lights continuously depending on the revolutions um, in, in effect, depending on the RPM that you're at. When you get to the top, when, when the furthest, furthest right, LED is lit, that's telling you to change up. That's when you're perceivably going to be bouncing off the rev limiter. The rev, the top end rev limiter on this car is 9,000, which is incredible, which is why everybody loves the 458 naturally aspirated uh, V8 motor. Um, it's just uh, phenomenal how you can rev it up to 9,000. So the design of the steering wheel is flat at the bottom. So obviously that eases so your legs will fit nicely and snugly underneath and it makes it very ergonomic. It's a nice tidy steering wheel, very small. Um, it's got a good thickness to it. Your, your, your fingers fall nicely to the different controls quite easily. And this particular steering wheel, because this has got the carbon driving zone, what's called the carbon driving zone, which is the carbon steering wheel, so carbon accents on the steering wheel and the carbon on the binnacle of the dash. In addition, these, these parts are separate, these parts in carbon, the ventilation vents, and the louvres etc that section there an additional uh, extra cost item but we're not talking about those we're talking about the steering wheel so i'm going to talk you through the functionality of the steering wheel and you'll get to appreciate how complex a lot of the a lot of the operations are so i'll be turning the ignition on and off as well for various operations again this car has got a tracker on it if i have the ignition on for too long then vodafone gives me a call <laughs> and uh, and tells me that somebody's trying to steal my car obviously they're not but um uh, you know, I get so many phone calls from from uh, Vodafone when I'm just got the ignition on when I'm setting things or, or checking things. It's when the car's in storage. It's 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 quite painful. I can understand why a lot of people don't bother using it, but I've got to for insurance reasons. So if I turn the ignition on for some areas of functionality. So first of all, most people will think, well, nice big yellow press there. That's got to be the horn. No, that's not. That's just. Sorry, it's beeping to tell me that the actual driver's door is open. This isn't the horn at all. This is just uh, the airbag and has no functionality other than obviously protect, um, providing safety for you in the, in the, um, in the occurrence of an accident. <clears throat> the horn is actually where your thumbs would be placed. Um, actually, my hands don't actually fall naturally to this position. My hands naturally fall to that position, but that's because of how I'm used to driving. Um, and I'm not used to driving supercars. This is my first supercar. So you, your hands should naturally fall to this position and your thumbs obviously to here and you depress. These are the buttons for the horn. So you actuate the horn by pressing either button on the side of the steering wheel. Now, <clears throat> while I'm here, I'll show you the indicators. Now that the indicator design has been braided quite a bit on these, um, on the 458s and above cars um, because of their design. Um, the indicators being on the steering wheel, you push the left indicator to go left and the right to go right. Now, you have to press it quickly for it to latch and then obviously when you turn the steering wheel that way it will, ca will self-cancel the, the indication. Now if you want to do a lane change which gives you circa three or four pulses on the indication you press it slightly longer it will flash for a few seconds and then stop so that's when you're lane changing on the motorway. Now 
People say that you can only press these buttons or the Intimate, you can only press these buttons on the top. If you've got your hands here, you can actually press them on the top, um, press them on the actual top instead of the front face. You can actually press them on the top as well and cancel them on the top as well. They do actually function that way. Now, interestingly enough, the new Roma, Ferrari Roma, actually has a paddle at the back on the indication so you can depress the indications, actuate the indicators from the front or from the back levers. That would be a lot better and that is a lot better design. Also, the horn on the Roma is actually actuated on either side of the central binnacle on the actual steering wheel. Um, it isn't actuated from these buttons on the side of the steering wheel so clearly they realised that that wasn't very intuitive actually putting the buttons on the steering wheel. And if you're slightly wrong, slightly a bit high on the, on the horn as well, then it doesn't work. It doesn't press. You've got to be quite accurate to actually make the horn work, which um, isn't very good if you're trying to warn somebody or if you're um, or if somebody stepped out in front of you in the road and you need to really um, let them know you're there very quickly. That's not very intuitive. Now moving on, move on to the um, obvious engine start button. Now you have to have the ignition on for the engine start button to work. I'm not going to start the car because the car is in storage, but you'd have the ignition on and you press the engine start button. Now you don't need to press the engine. Now when you start the engine, you only need to press the start button once. You don't need to hold the start button. And it, contrary to a lot of beliefs, it isn't an engine off button. It's only an engine start button. If you want to turn the engine off, then you have to turn the ignition off and then the engine will stop. The engine will switch off. So now we get to the windscreen wipers and I'm not going to turn the ignition on for the windscreen wipers because I don't want the windscreen wipers wiping on a dry windscreen. Now the windscreen wipers is incredibly complex. You're just never going to remember this functionality. You've got to remember and, and keep in mind that most people are going to be driving these types of cars, these, these 458s especially and 488s and, and, and predominantly the Specialis and the Pistas which have a similar steering wheel design. They're going to be driving these cars infrequently. They're going to have the car similar to me in storage during the winter periods they're going to be driving the cars in nice sunny days and they're going to be putting a few hundred miles on the car maybe a thousand miles a year on the car at most especially in the uk so if you have really complicated design especially on something like windscreen wipers you know if you're caught in the rain then people aren't going to remember this functionality I mean, i've got a very good memory and i'm technical and i can't remember it you know i have to keep checking exactly how you use the windscreen wipers now That'll all come into context when I tell you actually how you operate them. Now, first of all, you switch the ignition on. Now, one quick press puts the windscreen wipers into auto mode. That means that the rain sensor comes into play and the rain sensor will automatically sense and set the wipers on if it senses rain and it will set the speed of the wipers relevant to the, to the um, amount of rain that's falling, to, to the strength of the rain. I think most people are just going to switch it into auto mode. They're not going to bother with manual modes because anything other than auto is just far too complex. But one press would be auto. Now to switch it out of auto mode, you then press it again and that puts it into speed one. And then you press it again, that will put it into speed two. And then you press it again, it will cycle it back into auto mode. Now if you're in speed one or speed two, if you pull back on the button, it takes it backwards from the position that you are. So if you've progressed from auto to speed one to speed two by pressing it forwards, then when you pull, when you pull on the lever, it will go from speed two to speed one. You pull on it again, it will go to auto. You pull it on again and it will switch off. You can only switch off the windscreen wipers by pulling on the button. You can't switch it off by pushing on the button. Again, overtly complex. If you cycle from auto to one and two and then back to auto again through the top button, why can't it switch off as well? I guess there must be a reason for that. Now, if you've got the windscreen wipers off and you do a long pull on the, on the windscreen wiper button, a fairly long pull, it's probably about half a second, I believe, then that puts it into what's called anti-panic mode. <laughs> Go figure, eh? Anti-panic mode. Now, in effect, what that means is that if you have a, a quick cloud burst and you need to get rain cleared away from the windscreen very quickly, then a, a, a fairly long pull on the windscreen wiper button with the windscreen wiper switched off will clear the screen pretty quickly. And that's probably a good thing to remember because by the time you faffed around trying to get it onto the right speed, um, God knows what could have hit your windscreen. But uh, I, I say, in general, people would use the auto mode and um, they would use the auto mode and maybe the, the anti-panic mode if the wipers were off. 
Now, if the wipers are off again and you do um, a, a long press on the top button, it automatically switches it into the second speed. So it puts it into fast wipe mode. Not to be confused with anti-panic, what I think of as flappy mode, <laughs> in anti-panic mode, which is a long pull on the button and that will put it, say if the wipers are off, put it into anti-panic mode. So, so just to summarize there, a long pull on the button with the with the ignition off puts it into anti-panic mode. A long push on the button with the wipers off puts it into speed two. And then you've got the cycling through the different options through pushing and pulling on the actual wiper mode, wiper mode button. Now, you'd never have guessed it was so complex, would you? Why put just one button there? You'd think you'd need something like um, you know, similar to the Manatino, some sort of switch there, or or just have a wiper, a wiper um, lever as as is normal on the steering wheel, you know. Um, and the other thing as well, um, just moving back to the indicators again, because I forgot to mention this. It's all very well having the indicators on the left and right, and you think, yeah, it's very logical. But what happens when the steering wheel is around this way, and you're thinking left, right, right, left, you know, and you're and you're not quite located where the actual indicators are you know you're not going to be able to indicate and you're coming up to a roundabout and you need to you need to switch round or you're going to the right um, and you come round to that section you want to indicate left to show that you're coming off at that particular um, section of the roundabout it's getting very complicated when the steering wheels um, not straight ahead so not a great design it's all very well having a, a steering wheel design like an f1 car but you're not driving on an f1 track so you know that it just doesn't work i think indicator stalk an indicator stalk would be a lot better and i think a windscreen wiper stalk would be a lot better as well but of course this looks really cool and definitely this looks a lot better than having indicator stalks and windscreen wiper stalks and headlight stalks as well um, but you know it's um it's form over function as opposed to function over form so Moving away from the windscreen wipers, let's move on now to the headlights. Now the headlights is an interesting one as well. It's not as complex as the windscreen wipers, but again, it's not necessarily as simple as it could be. Now you, first of all, with regards to the headlights, you switch, I can switch the ignition on. So switch, you switch, have to have the ignition on. And if you switch the lights to the side lights mode, so the actual headlights are on, not the side lights mode. So if you switch the if you switch the mode to the headlights to the dip beam. Now, if you want to flash the head the main beam, now you have to pull on the button. You can't do it by pushing, and there's a reason for that. So you pull on the button, and it flashes the lights. As you can see, you can hear the relay going there. Now, to change the headlights from dipped to main beam, you push on the headlights. And then you push again to change it back to dipped and again flash by pulling so that is actually very straightforward that's not complex at all so i've got no issue with that that's quite fine that's quite good now most people and this is a, a bugbear of mine when i'm when i'm not driving this car most people leave the car in headlight auto mode and the auto me mode means that the car senses when it's dark and it automatically switches the lights on now I believe, I've got to check this, but I believe the car automatically dips the headlights as well when it senses another car's headlights coming towards you. They never dip quick enough, these auto systems. It's a bugbear of mine when I'm driving my daily driver that I'm coming towards a car and if it's a, a newish style car and they always have super powerful headlights, the automated systems never dip quick enough. You end up being blinded for a certain you know amount of seconds and that could cause an accident. And I know this is a big bugbear um in in the in the press and in the um on the forums a lot of people complain about that but it is what it is so you know i mean i won't be driving this car very much at night so i won't be using the lights that much so um i'll probably uh, use them manually and obviously that's set to off now an interesting thing that isn't option from the steering wheel um, but you can actually use separately. This car has what's called driver's lights. So the actual side lights will operate as, as driver's lights as well. One of the main features of the steering wheel is what's called the Manatino. Now the Manatino provides you all your different driving operations, which is fantastic design. And this is again, something that's come over from the F1 world and is, is very good that it's been brought over from the F1 world. It's a great little feature, great design. Now, currently we have on the, on the 458, we have wet mode, sport mode, race mode, CT off and ESC off. 
Now wet mode pretty much speaks for itself. It means that the traction control is heavily engaged. It's going to be very safe and operative for you. Um, and you're not going to be able to have much fun with regards to spinning the, the rear wheels, etc. It's going to be very much um, going to be a sensible mode. And if you're if you're not sure of the conditions and you're and say it's a bit icy, etc., then the wet mode is the mode that you should leave the car in. And moving it to sport mode. By the way, these modes are represented on the left screen. Moving into sport mode, this is your normal driving position and this is what's called your performance driving position. So 99% of the time, that is the position for driving on the roads, on the normal public roads, that is what you would use for performance mode unless you're in wet or in, unless it's icy. Now moving into race mode, race mode is predominantly used for track. So it provides more performance, it eases off the traction control, eases off the conditions a bit, um, gives you um, faster revving. I believe it firms up the suspension more. Wet mode gives you, in effect, um, a compliant, a very compliant suspension, um, as though you've got bumpy road button pressed. More on that in a minute. And in sport mode, it's, um, it firms up the it firms up the suspension and firms up the actual um, performance side of the car. Gives you a more responsive acceleration gives you more, resp more responsive throttle control. Um, race provides you even sharper throttle response and even firmer suspension. Now, if you move the button around to CT off, what CT, CT off is another mode similar to race that should be used only on the track. You shouldn't use it on public roads. It disengages traction control, but it leaves stability control enabled. So you've still got stability control enabled and obviously ABS, ABS always, always stays enabled and E-diff, um, but traction control is switched off so that is quite leery now if we go to ct if we go to esc off which is the furthest right mode you can't actually gain that mode just it's, it's on the spring you can't actually gain it just by flicking it there you've got actually got to hold it there and then hold it back and the the display beeps at you tells you esc off esc is off and it's warning you constantly that esc is off in red now what ESC off means, you've also got a red warning light there on the steering wheel on the Manatino. Now what ESC off actually means is trash control is off, stability control is off, you're on your own. So only the, only the real, very either really stupid people <laughs> or really good drivers or racing drivers would be using ESC off. The only thing that is still enabled is ABS and the e-diff which provides you some stability these have got a very intelligent electronic differential so e-diff will still be enabled but stability control is off now and traction control is off so you're on your own and obviously to switch it back again you can just switch it to race and switch it back to any of those modes and you change the mode of the car so very clever now with all of these modes um, with wet sport and race mode you can set it to the, the actual, the, the, the modes other than wet. Wet will have the compliant suspension settings and in effect you have bumpy road automatically switched on. Bumpy road is, is quite a, a quaint phraseology, but that is actually the correct term. And what it means is it softens up the suspension. So it allows for um, roads like they have in the UK, um, which is this button here, bumpy road mode. It's this picture of a, a, or an emblem of a shock absorber. Um, it's used predominantly for bumpy roads and for uneven roads such like they have in Italy and in the UK, so mainly in the European market. And you can engage bumpy, wo bumpy road mode. It's automatically engaged in wet, but when you move to sport or race, the suspension is firmed up. But a very good design feature is that you can switch to sport or race and then you can press bumpy road mode. And as you can see from the dashboard, bumpy road mode is then engaged. So you can engage bumpy road mode in both sport and race. And that is very useful for the UK roads and it makes a substantial amount of difference. It's very, very good. Now, the newer design Manatino that is incorporated into the Roma and is incorporated into the later models going forward is electronic. A lot of it is electronic and it's touch control. It's, it's a capacitive control. Um, a lot of these controls now in the Roma and, and um, going forward. The SF90, say for example, also has the same design as the Roma. So this is an electronic switch on the Roma. 
and it cycles through different conditions and it, and it represents the condition that you're in on the screen. Now, bumpy road mode is not engaged with a separate button on the Roma. On the Roma, you press in the Manatino and by pressing in the Manatino on the Roma, it engages bumpy road mode. So that's the way how bumpy road mode will be engaged in the future. And I think that's actually a cool design. It removes the need to have an extra button on the steering wheel and it's very intuitive that you just press in the Manatino. Once you're in a different section, then you quickly press in the button and it'll put you into bumpy road mode. That's pretty cool. Now, an interesting feature of this steering wheel is there's actually some buttons, some hidden buttons behind. A lot of people don't realize these buttons exist. Now, on the right hand side, you can't actually see them here, but you can feel them with your fingers. Now, it's a rocker switch and it has a button in the center. So it's a rocker switch that you rock either side with a button in the center. Um, and you have one on the right hand side of the steering wheel and you have one on the left hand side of the steering wheel. The right hand side version, you adjust the radio channel and in, in effect the radio frequency that you're at and change the channel by rocking up and down. So forwards and backwards, um, on rocking on the button, adjust the, the radio frequency and therefore adjust the channel. Now, if you press the middle button in, then that middle button changes the actual wave band of the radio. So up and down changes the frequency of the channel and pressing the button in changes the actual wave band. So you'll change it from say medium wave to long wave into FM. Now on the left side, you've got the volume controls. Now up button increases the volume, down button lowers the volume and the button in the center does something totally different. Again, I think this has caught a few people out and it's caught a few YouTubers out as well because the similar designers on the modern cars and I think they've accidentally pressed this button and thought that the car was doing some weird things. But when you press that button, it's actually the speech recognition button. So it's expecting you to put a command in. So of course, when you press that button, the, the computer in the car prompts you to actually say a command and people think it's the actual it's the actual car doing funny things but it isn't they've accidentally pressed the button in the back um, and it's engaged the speech recognition system so that's something um, interesting and something to keep in mind very few people read the manual on this car and it's only when you read the manual you realize that all this capability is there i bet a lot of people don't realize the speech recognition on this car and you have to tune the speech recognition um, through these controls here on the right hand side through the right hand screen and i've actually set up the speech recognition so i know how it works um, but you actually engage the switch speech recognition to actually enter a command by pressing the left hand button so those are the two hidden buttons and those are two super bizarre quirks and features of this 458 steering wheel. So that's the quirks and features of the 458 steering wheel. As I say, this steering wheel is also replicated across the 488, the 458 Speciale, the 488 Pista, um, but it actually has a changed design in the later models, in the newer models, in the Roma and the SF90 and in the new designs going forward. If you like the video and if you like the information, please make sure you click that like button and please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you like the content and please accept, select all for notifications so you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. We're trying to grow the channel guys to at least 1000 subscribers. That's our target for the end of this year, at least 1000 subscribers. So you really appreciate if you're not subscribed and you're liking the content, please just click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps the channel to move the channel forward. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.